Welcome to Real Day Trading. It's been a while, but a lot of you have asked me to do a video on trend lines, so I'm going to do one. And uh, I'm going to show you kind of how to draw them and and all the good things about trend lines. And I don't give up. I mean, it's honestly, oh, God, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But here, look, here's the deal. Okay. First off, like anything in technical analysis, if you just make it up and nobody else uses it, well, then you're the tree that fell in the forest and nobody gives a fuck. So you need to make sure that anything you're using is generally agreed upon by a majority of the liquidity in the market. So that means institutions, retail traders, they'll all look at that same line and go, yeah, that's support, or yeah, that's resistance. Because if they don't, then it doesn't matter. Without the consensus of the masses, technical analysis is meaningless. That's why simple moving averages are so powerful. Not because they're complicated or any of the most simple, basic thing you can do is a moving average. But everybody uses them, probably because they are so simple and most people don't use anything more complicated than that. But the 50, the 100, the 200, if you know where the 50 simple moving averages for SPY, chances are it's the same damn number that everyone else has, unless something's fucked up with your chart. So that's why those are so potent and why using the 50 moving average on the one minute chart is moronic because nobody else is doing that other than other morons. So great, you, you other morons agree where the 50 minute moving averages or whatever, that's gonna get you nowhere. But onto what will get you somewhere. First thing we're gonna do is talk about the fact that there are two, one, two different types of trend lines. That's right, two different types. The first one I'm gonna talk about is horizontal trend lines. And horizontal trend lines are special. Why are they special, you might ask? Well, that's a damn good question. And I'm going to tell you, they are special because horizontal lines can go through your candles and still matter. Not that, 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 that's just extraordinary. That makes the other trend lines go, damn, why can't I do that? Because they're not special. Horizontal lines are. I'm going to show you what I mean. Here is Amazon. I zoomed out here to about 2017. Oh, good old days. And I'm going to click here. And you can kind of eyeball. Right? You can use a volume profile and all that shit. But, I mean, honestly. You can just look at the damn thing. And you can see right off the bat. You can usually see right at the lows of, of some areas here, like here. There you go. Right? And you can see here, it tried to break through. Nope. Nope. Finally through. And then it messes around. And then nope. Up. And then over here. Right? Not a very strong line. Only a few touches. But that line matters. I'm going to go here. A little bit stronger line. Right fucking here, man. Right fucking here. There you go. Here you see it mattered a lot over here, right? Trying to go up, nope. Trying to go up, nope. Tries again. Fuck off. Goes here. Yay, I'm free. Nope. Goes here. And then finally, doesn't come back until over here. Nope. 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 nope, nope bam. Bam. Then gone, right? So back in this zone again. So you know you have your two trend lines, horizontal, and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna put another one in. That's right. I'm gonna go here and put in that one. And then, baby Jesus help me, I'm gonna put another one in, right around there. 
And when you take a step back and look at this, you'll see Amazon lives between two zones. You have this one here. This is the shit zone. Nobody likes this zone. Bam! The happy bullish zone. It's up here now. It's going to live here. Really, it's just, it's just kind of consolidating here until, nope, it comes back home to the shit zone here. So there you go, two zones, right? And everything in the middle is just traveling from one zone to the other. Well, now knowing this, you also know that if Amazon fell below around 81 here, well, there's nothing down here but empty air. It's got some problems. Well, that's a good stock to short right there. Well, let's take another look. I don't see so you might be saying to yourself, wait a second, hold on. Back up the bus. Maybe it's just Amazon, right? But no, no, no. Let's take a look at Meta, right? Let's take a look at Meta. Now, Meta, Meta is a weird little fucker. Why? Because it just, it just chops everywhere. Look at this. There's nothing clean. Bam, down. You know, bam, bam. And it pops up here. Everything is gaps with this fucking stock. Gap here, gap here, gap here. But that's why it's so important to be able to take the chart and make it make a little bit more sense in the world. So let's take a look at Meta if we did this. Right there, right? So we see here, here again, right there. You can see here, trying to get through. You move it up just a little bit like that. There you go. That's a pretty important line, I'd say, right there. Well, let's take another one and put it right there. Well, I'd say it's another important line. How to gap up through there. But look at that. It's pretty strong support here until it breaks below. That's COVID. And here it acts as pretty strong resistance until it breaks above. So there you go. You got not you got your two lines there. And then you can come up over here and put one in there. And then you can come over here and you can put another right there. It's a little bit easy because of these gaps that Meta likes to have. And so now you can see Meta doesn't travel in zones like Amazon did, right? Because most of the price action actually takes place outside of these zones, except for this. Meta is more of a, um, a stock that just jumps. You can see here, it, it, it goes from 376 all the way down here to 88 before it starts to head back and and it goes up from November to here it goes up a hundred dollars a share hundred dollars now if you had bought leaps on leap calls on meta here look at that return bam that's huge so next those are horizontal lines right and you can put them on anything and by the way, like, you know, if I put in NVIDIA, for example, you'll see them here too. I already put them in right there on NVIDIA. And you'll see these other lines, but we're not going to get to those yet. We will in a moment. First, we're going to go back to Meta. All right, so these are horizontal lines, right? And when I said it could break through, it meant just because it's now crossed through a candle doesn't mean the line isn't still relevant. When you're doing the ascending and descending lines, those, except on certain occasions, cannot just go through a candle like this. You can't just do that, right? It has to connect outside the candle and it has to connect from wick to wick to wick. Now, the general rule is you do not want it connecting at too severe of an angle. Right? You don't want to do that. That that doesn't help anybody. Right? That doesn't mean anything. Look at that. That is way too sharp of an angle there. So this isn't really acting like support. This is just a sharp uptrend for the stock. You also don't want to blatantly skip over a stock. Right? Because uh, a stock, a, uh, a connection point. 
like here, you go from here to here. Now this angle here is about 45 degrees. It's still a little sharp. But if I connect here, like this, I can go all the way here, all the way out, right up to that line. And now you have a pretty smooth trend line with several touches on it, and it goes right up to here, right? Creating that little triangle there. But let's take another look. If we were doing a descending one, let's start from up here and go down this way. But we could see, oh, we see jack shit right now. Hold on. We can see here, just like that. There, that is pretty strong resistance here. And then it breaks through right about there, this candle. Now, that is another sign of you should go long right here, right? Clear break of this well-established uh, trend line. In fact, I could probably pull this trend line back more to here. So the longer the line, the more touches on it, the more powerful it is going to be for support and resistance. And when you have a um, ascending trend line like this, it's acting as support. Don't forget, it's going up with the stock. So it's not like it's a stable number. And as long as the stock keeps going up, it's not going to break below that support. Um, well, that's true in general, right? But it, this year is going to keep increasing with the, the, the angle, the um, uh, slope of the stock. So I'm going to another look here. What if I went from out here all the way up here from far away and connected here? Now this connects from the tops of candles here and it's coming into the bottom of these candles so let's go and connect from top to top because you generally don't want to go and connect from the top of candles the top of wicks and then connect it to the bottom wicks of other candles so you want to stay top to top right so here i have one that goes all the way from January 2022, pretty much back when the bear market starts, right here. And this trend line touches here, here, and here, comes all the way down, and look at this. Look how it's acting as resistance here. But now look what happens if I extend this out. Extend this one out. Look at that. You have a very clear point here. And if I now take a horizontal line and put it right at that point, what happens? Well, on July 20th, that line, by the way, is one, what is this line here? This line is one, two, eight. Yes. Yes. Yep. 184.35. Here. High 183, 183.85. 183.60. 183.68. 183.68. 185.45. I mean, you can see. This line, this price point here of 184.35, which is right in the middle of, of all of these other ones. And look, right here, same thing. This is a pretty significant price. And it didn't seem, if you go back over here, pre-COVID, didn't matter that much. But here, 
these two trend lines converge together and create this. Now that doesn't always happen, but this line here of 84.35 is pretty significant. Now the stock is currently at 181.45. I want to know if it breaks above there or below here. So there, I have my two lines and I want to know if it breaks above or below. But now I have all this here, right? And I can draw another one. I can go and say, okay, here's this. What about this line? And you can see this one here. I can't just go like this, by the way. Here's something you should know. See, I go from here and here. No, I can't just pretend like these don't exist. I have to connect here to here. That is the line, not this one. And you can do this all day long, right? You can go, okay, look at that. But it has the, the next natural connection is a really important concept. The next natural connection. If I'm drawing this line, this here is the next natural connection. It's not this one or this over here or down here. It's this. And that goes pretty much straight to the same spot this one did. And so once again, you have another kind of price point here. See that? Right there. And these lines, particularly these long ones like this here, can be pretty like, like a green light for a trader when you see, okay, it's gone above this line. Now, sometimes what will happen is you will get a stock that will kind of break a line and then consolidate right around that area. And when that happens, let's see if we could find a example of that. Um, I'll go back to the video now over here. Um, you can kind of see, for example, here, right? If I take this. And this is a little bit too sharp of a, you see that there? So that would be more of the natural continuation for the line, right? So this line here, you can see it breaks below it and it just continues down, right? And then forms a consolidation here and then starts heading back up. This line right here, and delete that, take this, that's too steep. So that's too steep. That is not. If I take this one here and this is the line. Now, sometimes you will have an aberrant candle. So connecting here to here, here, that one there, that's a little fuck up candle right there. It shouldn't be there. And it was probably because of some news event or something with the market that caused that candle to stick out. But it interrupts the this to this to this right to there. Um, you also want to keep in mind that when you have zones like this, right? So what do I mean by zones? When you see something like, um, let's go, go back to meta for a second. Yeah, when you see something like this, right? like that and these are kind of consolidation zones and this here is the top of it here right there uh, it's the bottom of it and it starts right around let's see um, right there is where it starts and it goes to there you want to put alerts on the bottom edge of it, which would be here and the top edge of it, because you want to know which way it's going to break here. You have a trend line coming in. So you see you have clear resistance coming above this consolidation. You have this line here. You wouldn't know yet because it, that that hasn't happened, but you have this right and you see this consolidation. If you had your 
alert right at 154.85, and then this year is 153.03, you would short right there. And then down it goes. And then here you have another mini consolidation here. See this right there? It's another one. So what do you do? You would put an alert on the top end and the bottom end. Well, it would go off there. Down it goes. And now here, once again, consolidates right here. And this one's a longer one, but it's right here. Just pure shop back and forth. The stock is really going nowhere. There. We have that. And then take that there and kind of right there. Um, bring that out a little bit. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So the stock's going nowhere until it breaks up this way. I know it's again. Here you have. Uh, resistance and here you have clear support so it doesn't have many places to go right if you look in the video right now once again Nvidia is actually pretty well trapped here in this like where is it gonna go you just put an alert there and you put an alert there it's got to break one way or the other. You just don't know when, do you? No, nobody does. Um, now, by the way, if we da, 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 added to all of this fun, this, it's not complicated enough, right? Here is your 15 EMA. Here's your simple moving averages, 200, 100, 50. And now you can see Meta broke above the 200 day moving average here. And got a little bit extended from its 15 EMA there. And the wicks got a little bit, went a little bit crazy trying to break trend line up there and then we'll we'll hell hell who knows now now it's like right there right right in the middle of that blue horizontal line so you got your horizontal line you got your descending trend line with the wicks touching there you got your you got your 15 ema right there and who the hell knows what's going to happen with the 15 ema i sure as hell don't then you got your support line under there but then you got your boxes of compression right there and you know Obviously, you look at that and go, well, shit, I know exactly what I should do. Ha! <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. There you go. There's some things, right? You got some things. You know what? Here's the thing. Read the damn wiki. There's the thing. You just, you just, you just read the damn wiki.